What's good, YouTube? It's Aquarius of Life and Prophecy, and um, I just wanted to talk about, um, you know, sports in general. Um, like, we all know that, you know, football and basketball is up there between, you know, the two sports, you know, Major League Baseball, hockey. They're kind of like below. So, um, my question is, you know, which sport would dominate within the next 10 years? So, meaning 10 years from now, since we're in 2020, so basically until 2030, who, like, which team will have a better, you know, success within the next 10 years? Uh, Basque, um, the NFL or, or the NBA? Now, me being a huge, you know, NBA fan head that I am, um, I would have to go with the NBA because the way, the way that the league is structured, the way that the NF the NBA league is structured, you know, with LeBron James going into his 18th season, uh, you still got Kevin Durant, you still got Kyrie, you still got Giannis, you still got these up and coming, you know, superstars, rookies, you know. Like, everybody knows them, right? Like, obviously, basketball is more globalized than the NBA, the NFL is, you know. Um, the NBA, the NFL is only known in within the United States, you know. Like, I, uh, like I believe if you go to Mexico, even Mexico, like, even Mexico, if you go to Mexico, they'll, they'll know who Derrick Rose is. They'll know who, you know, Giannis is, you know what I'm saying? But if you go to Mexico and you tell them who Tom Brady is, they're going to ask you, who? Who's that? I don't know who's that. Who's that? I don't know who's that, you know? So, um, but, you know, I mean, I got my five. Nah, actually, I'm not going to go with their f top. Uh, okay, yeah. So, basically, I got my top five reasons why the NBA will succeed within the next 10 years. Okay. Number one, jersey sales. Now, obviously, the NFL, they're not, not actually, they're not, not the NFL. The NBA is outselling the NFL in jersey sales, you know? Like Zion, there's more Zion Williamson jerseys out there than Tom Brady's, you know what I'm saying? There's more Todd Gurley jerseys out there than, you know, actually, there's more, there's more Zion Williamson jerseys out there more than Tom Brady and Todd Gurley knowing that they're knowing that they both change teams um you know so I think that department is going is going to is going in the right direction you know because obviously you need jersey sales in any corporation that you're running you know that's how you you know bolster up more money and you know what I'm saying so uh that number two uh Number two is, um, number two reason why the NBA will succeed within the next 10 years is because they're more versatile, right? Like, you can go to overseas, you can, you can go to the G League, you know what I'm saying? Like, they could sign you to a 10-day contract, 5-day contract, there's options, the NFL, there is no options. It's not like the NFL where you could go to the XFL, you know what I'm saying, get some reps over there and then come back and to the NFL and then say, oh, okay, I'm ready. No, you know, like in the, the NFL, it's a, it's, it's more of a, it's a, it's more of a, uh, a hamster on wheel type of, you know, company where, you know, when they draft you, whether you are, you know, whether you are first round draft pick, middle draft pick, last draft pick, or undrafted player, you're still gonna have to go in there and compete. While the NBA, if you lacking in your offense or your defense, you can get, you could get some time, to 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 work on your game, on both sides of the ball, on defense and on offense. You know what I'm saying? You could spend like three years in the G League. You could go to overseas and come back. 
And, you know, I mean, I think, I think when you're done, I, I think that when you're like almost to your, you know, end of the ropes, and when you don't have no more options, that's, I think, when you could go to the, to the overseas. You know what I'm saying? But I think for the, for just the G League and the D League, uh, I think that's where the developmental, you know, capacity is that is there. You know, they, they, don't, they don't have that for the NFL. You know, so I think, you know, that, number two, is, you know, obviously, I think that's where, you know, the NBA has an edge over the NFL. Number three, protecting players. You know, like I think the NBA does a very good job of protecting their players. Meaning, um, you know, like the NBA is not, NBA players are not going out there and doing stupid crap. Like you've seen the NBA, NFL players have been doing over the past few months. You know what I'm saying? Like the cornerback from the New York Giants where he got into that incident. Uh, you know, you had a lot of NFL players getting, you know, charged with gun possessions and all that crazy mess. Like, if you're trying to run a, a, a corporation or a business, you cannot let the inmates run the asylum. And I think that's what the Texans owner was alluding to when he said that, you know, years ago, you know, when he said that we can't let the inmates run the asylum. Now I understand what he was talking about. You know, like, these NFL players are just going out there and doing stupid crap. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously the NFL has no ties to what they do outside of the NFL. As long as they're inside the NFL bubble, they can control them. But obviously they'll still get punished because they're still, you know, uh, an employee of their business. You know what I'm saying? you could They could deal with you with fines. They could suspend you for like a couple of games and stuff like that. But if you keep on repeating the same thing, they're just going to kick you out and remove everything that you have from the NFL. Whether it's video game, merchandises, whatever have you. So I think number three, protecting your players. Uh, I, think the NF I think the NBA does a very good job, you know, because obviously, yeah, obviously with this, you know, with this bubble thing, you know, Certain players got in trouble for sneaking out and stuff like that. A little baby stuff. Not too serious. Uh, number four. Um, playoffs in NBA. I mean, playoffs experience. And what I mean by playoff experience is that teams that's not necessarily getting their experience are now getting their experience, like the Suns. The Suns are moving in the right direction. You know what I'm saying? The Kings are moving in the right direction. That Magic is moving in the right direction. So within a couple of years, you're going to see teams like those teams, you know, get up in the standings. You know what I'm saying? Um, while in the NFL, you still have the Jaguars who's still not producing. You got, you know, the Browns who's up and down. You know, that's all they seem to talk about in the NFL is the Browns. You know, they're like, they don't talk about all 32 teams like they should because they, that's their job is to talk about all 32 teams. Why just stick on one topic over and over and over again? Like, we know the Cleveland Browns. We know who they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know who they are, so we you like you don't have to keep on shoving it down our throats, you know what I'm saying? But they do it just to get views, you know what I'm saying? Because obviously they don't have nothing to talk about because the season hasn't started yet. So I mean, why why you know take it out on them, you know? But you know teams teams that's you know small market teams are on the rise, you know. Um, so yeah. And number five is the glory, the glory of glories. And what I mean by the glories of glories is what the NBA did last year. Nobody expected Toronto to win the championship. You know, just by adding Kawhi, they boost their chances of making the playoffs and winning the whole thing, obviously, by just one move. 
by just one move, they literally, they literally, you know, you know, shock the whole NBA, you know? And I hope this continues. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to work, but as you can see, the Brooklyn Nets already got to, you know, um, you know what they're doing down in Miami with Jimmy and, and, and Eagle Dollar and stuff like that. If they add another core, like a, a Blake Griffin type, they could probably make some noise. You know what I'm saying? The, um, not the Knicks. Um, you know, the Sixers, you know, with Ben and, and, and Joel Embiid. And now if they can add in like another, you know, let's say Anthony Davis, you know, because obviously he's a free agent. Or Giannis, they could, potentially, they could potentially, you know, obviously dominate the East. And they could see themselves in the playoffs for the first time since 2001 when Iverson went there, obviously. So, you know, you got teams on the rise. While the NFL, you got teams that's stuck in their position. That You got teams that's stuck in their conference or division, can never go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, they have no structure. They have no, they have no idea what they want, you know? The Texans should already won a championship. The Vikings should have won a should already won a championship. Now I'm not saying that they should just give championships to everybody who don't have a championship. Obviously, you're gonna have to put the right core, the right mixture together to win a championship. You know, like on both sides of the ball. You know, just like how the 49ers are equipped. You know, like they're they're loaded on defense and on offense. Now, they may have lost a few players over free agency, but, you know, with the draft and undrafted free agents and stuff like that, that can, you know, fill some holes in that defense and offense. So, like, teams like the Jets, you know, they could probably, you know, run their division for the next, you know, five years. You know what I'm saying? Probably go to, like, multiple, you know, playoffs, win their division, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. I could see them doing that, but Super Bowl wise, no. Um same thing for the Texans. I can see the Texans, you know, running away with their division every single year. But they'll probably be first they'll probably be one and done in the playoffs because obviously that's just how they're structured, you know? Um, even when they had Andre Johnson, you know what I'm saying, and and you know, in 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 um Arian Foster, you know, like they had a pretty good group of core, you know what I'm saying? But obviously they couldn't get over the hump, you know. Even when they had you know David Carr, you know, years ago, like 2003, like they still hadn't you know figure it out. So. Um, that's what I mean by glory of glory. Like the NFL, like the NBA knows like they can't necessarily stick on one team every single year. You know what I'm saying? That's like the Lakers or the Clippers three-peating every single year. Now, obviously that have, that has had happened. I mean, that's, ha that's happened over the years, but I know, now, I mean, I think the NFL, I mean, I think the NBA is learning that. You know, with the right group of, of players and coaching staff and, you know, role players that they can obviously win the whole thing, you know. While the NFL is just behind, far behind, you know what I'm saying? Like, like wouldn't, like, wouldn't the Jets, like, wouldn't Jets fans like to see their team in the Super Bowl? I know I would. It would make great for money, right? Like, grading-wise, like, like. Oh, yo, the Jets are in the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? But I know that's never going to happen. Um, but, you know, you can have hope for the Sixers, you know, obviously. Or you can have hope for, you know, like teams that's on the rise. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm not saying that they're going to do it for all teams, you know, who doesn't have a ring. But teams that's up and coming. Teams are... Teams that's, you know, on the rise, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but the NFL, obviously, you know, now with the Patriots non-existent, they're going to try to find the next dynasty. That's just how it is. 
you know, and now they see it in Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Now, I wouldn't be shocked if the Chiefs wind up winning another Super Bowl next year. And, you know, like, it literally depends who come out the a- NFC conference. You know, because every team retools, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can tell you off the bat, there's probably like 10 teams that's not even going to go to to playoffs or make it to the Super Bowl, you know? Um, I can name you the teams right now. Um, I could probably name you five teams off the bat that's probably not even going to make the Super Bowl. The Giants, the Redskins, the Chargers, the Broncos... And the Steelers. That's just five at the top of my head right there. Or I could probably say six in the Redskins, obviously. The Eagles, I can obviously see them pushing to make the, the Super Bowl. The 49ers, yes. Uh, the Vikings, no. Um, the Raiders, no. Uh, the Rams, no. The Falcons, yes. Um... You know what I'm saying? Like, teams like that, I could see them winning or getting there. You know what I'm saying? Um, the Browns, no. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I mean, it's just favoritism right now. You know, that's just that's just how sports is right now. Back then, it, like, around the 90s, the 80s, it was more different, you know? I mean, at least they gave teams chances, you know? Like, who would have thought that the Giants would have lost to the Bills? You know what I'm saying? Like, on hindsight, everybody thought that Kelly was going to get, you know, his first ring against the the Giants. But obviously, he had to run through Lawrence Taylor and them. So, I mean, obviously, you know, it had to go down to a field goal. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you had the Redskins in the, in the, in the Cowboys in the playoffs. I mean, in the Super Bowl. Not in the Super Bowl, but in the playoffs because... Obviously, two teams can't. Two teams in the same conference can't meet in the Super Bowl. But obviously, you know, throughout the years, the Cowboys has, you know, been the better team in the playoffs against their division rivals. Um, or I think it was the Bengals, the Bengals and the Cowboys. You know, so like it's favoritism. You know, that's just how the sports, that's just how sports is these days. It's favoritism. It's favoritism. You know, they favorite the teams that's going to make the most money, generate the most money. And whoever makes the most money, whether it's ticket sales, merchandises, they're probably going to be in the front seat of making the playoffs. As you can say, you know, like who was the most, like who was the most sell jersey tickets? Jersey sales. It was Jimmy Garoppolo because of that move by him going to the 49ers. Probably second, Patrick Mahomes. Third, probably um, Lamar Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Fifth is probably Watson. So uh, it's favoritism. Teams who sell more merchandises, ticket sales, whatever have you, they're going to have the upper hand. As you can see, the Giants did not have enough ticket sales or merchandises that's why you know that's why you're not gonna probably gonna see them in the playoffs for a very long time. You know, I mean as a Giants fan myself, well ex Giants fan, you're not gonna see the Giants in the playoffs anytime soon. You're not gonna see them next year, you're not gonna see them maybe the year before that. They're gonna suffer what you call uh um uh, uh, I forgot what you call that. A decline. There you go, a decline. Very long decline. You know? Like, can they get better? Yes. But they're not going to win championships anytime soon. They're not going to make their playoffs anytime soon. They're going to keep on going through a lot of head coaches because there's only a few head coaches in the NFL that had the same pedigree as Joe Judge did. You know, obviously the head coach for the, for the Baltimore Ravens, um... You know, he was a special teams head coach. You know what I'm saying? Um, You know, Mike Tomlin, he was a special teams head coach. You know, uh, Rex Ryan, he was a special teams head coach. But I'm talking about teams that, I'm talking about head coaches that were special teams and then moved up to head coach from special teams to head coach. So, 
You know, this is going to be his first time managing everything. You know, not just only in one position, but just managing all 53 guys in one ball club. So it's going to be a struggle. But, you know, I mean, obviously, I'm not here to talk about the Giants, but um, I was just giving you the example. So um, that's just my take on what I think the NBA, what I think the NBA will shape out to be in the next 10 years. Now, you can say the same thing about the NFL, like I said about the NBA, where you can have your opinion on, oh, the NFL is going to succeed within the next 10 years. You know what I'm saying? And you can give me your five top reasons why, just like how I gave you my five reasons why. Um, because jersey sales play a very big part of, of a team's success. The more jersey sales is out there, the better the team is going to get. You know what I'm saying? Because this is kind of like a boost of momentum and, you know, a jelly and rush. So, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what y'all think. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other. And comment down below what sport you think will dominate in the next 10 years. Basketball or football. Just those two sports. Because those are the only two sports that's, you know, popping right now. You know?